Thank you for watching the video today. In it, we're going to be discussing how to set up and configure a Power BI dashboard to review the health of your Revit model. Both the Model Checker check set and Power BI dashboard template are being provided for your use. And this video specifically is gonna talk through how you acquire those, how you set them up, and how you can use them to gain valuable insight and information into your Revit model. As a quick introduction, as I mentioned, we're gonna demonstrate how we're gonna create a dashboard for our Revit models. We're providing you both the model checker check set that's gonna collect the information as well as a Power BI template, and we'll have links to those later on in the presentation. This discusses functionality inside of Revit 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 at this point. For the purposes of this demonstration, we are using the specific versions of Model Checker and Power BI documented there. We don't anticipate any issues as the versions change or evolve, but certainly uh, we wanted to document this in here and have this in here for reference if you're using this video later on. So once we're done with the video, you should be able to have a single model dashboard that can give you val valuable metric and model health information like this, and also a trending dashboard that can monitor your model over time and pay attention to its changes as it goes through design process. As just a quick workflow overview, how this works is that you will run a check in your Revit model with the provided check set. The results of that check will be exported to an Excel file. We're going to create a Power BI report from the provided template, and we will need to adjust that Power BI report to look at the folder where our Excel file is created. And we specifically point to a folder and not an Excel file because over time, as our design evolves and as our work and our model evolves, we can continue to run our model checker report against that model and collect data inside of that specific folder and our Power BI dashboard will evolve and show the updated information from those reports. So in terms of what you're gonna to need to accomplish these tasks, you're gonna need the Autodesk BIM interoperability tools for Revit. Specifically, you need the model checker and that is included in the, the BIM interoperability tools. You can acquire those for 2019 and 2020 by going to the Autodesk desktop app and here's a screenshot of where it is there or you can go to your Autodesk account page and go to product updates and download it there as well. You're gonna need the Microsoft Power BI desktop app and if you don't have that, get in touch with your IT group and see if you can acquire that. You're going to need the provided Power BI template and model checker check set. And you can download those from biminteroperabilitytools.com. The file is dashboard.zip. And in that zip file, you're going to find both the check set, you're going to find the Power BI template, and there is also a small text file that gives some information, uh, the basic steps to configure and set up a project for use on this. And then obviously you're going to need a Revit model that you want to track information from. So the initial setup that we have to do once for each Revit model, the steps are outlined there. We're going to call back to this slide in a little bit, but instead of simply walking through uh, or talking through these steps, I'm going to open up Windows, I'm going to open up Revit, I'm going to open up Power BI, and we're going to walk through each of these steps to show you precisely how to set up your project. Luckily, per project, you only have to do this setup once, and then once it's configured, you simply rerun your reports and export those results, and your Power BI dashboard is automatically updated properly. So step one is fairly simple. All I need to do is either create or identify a folder where I'm going to be collecting my exported Excel files, and these are the files that I am exporting after I run my model checker reports inside of my Revit file. So here is my uh, demo project folder. I am simply going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it reports. So this is where my Excel files are going to live after I create them. I want to be sure not to put anything else inside of here because Power BI does not look exclusively at the Excel files in this folder. It simply looks at all the files inside of this folder. So if it can open up the file, it's going to try to consume that data and it could get confused and it could break my report if it happens to open it up, but it can't parse that data out properly. So I want to be sure that only those Excel files 
live inside of this folder once it's once it's created and once I've started to generate those those reports. So now that I've created my folder to contain all my Excel files, I need to configure my project to run the model checker check set that is being used to generate the content for the dashboard. So I have my Revit model open here in Autodesk Revit 2020. I can go to BIM Interoperability Tools tab after I've installed the BIM Interoperability Tools. And then like any other model checker report, I simply go to Setup. Now once I've opened up Setup, this file itself has never been configured to run the model checker before. So it's asking me which XML check set I want to associate with this file. Now I've downloaded the zip file and I have opened it up so I could browse out to my project directory and open it there. Or they also have provided the health dashboard sample here in the public library. So I'm just gonna click here and say okay and I'm opening it up inside of my model. So this is the, the, the second step in configuring things. Now once this is opened up I need to take my third step and I actually need to make sure that the year of Revit is associated properly with the checks inside this check set. So with this dialog open I can click on this model dashboard check section over here and I can scroll all the way down where we've collected the series of four checks called total elements and then the Revit year. And each version of Revit tweaks what the categories are for model elements. That's why we had to break this up into different years. And what I want to make sure is that I'm in Revit 2020 and the Revit 2020 elements check is checked and the other ones are not checked. Now, once that's done, I'm just going to hit save and close. And now this model is configured to use the dashboard check and it will skip the wrong years of element checks and use the correct year there. So now we move on to the next step, which is simply to run the report inside of Model Checker. Now that the XML is correctly set up, I can just go back up to BIM Interoperability Tools on the Model Checker panel and I can click Run. This is asking me which file I'm running against. This is my correct file. I'm just going to say Run Report here. The check itself is not very large. If I had a larger model, it may take a little more time, but I've got my results back here. Most of these results are counting or reporting results. They aren't pass fail. I'm using my Power BI dashboard to give me information about thresholds there or not, but I've run my check here. And so that check is all set to be exported, which leads us into step five, which of course is saving this to Excel. So down here on my report page, I've got this Excel button. I click that, it asks me where I want to put it. And this is where I need to browse out and find that project location that I had set up. So that was on my project directory on my S drive under projects. Here's my sample project. And this is that reports folder that I created initially. And this is where I'm going to be putting all of my Excel files. So now that I'm in that path, I just need to give it a name. Now the name of the file does not matter to Power BI but obviously it's gonna make it much easier for us if we give it a name that is going to be easy to recognize which report was which before. So I'm simply gonna call this report 001. And then once that's ready, I just hit save, and I'm not going to check export list elements because all the dashboard is concerned with are the counts on the first page. And I'm gonna say okay. Shouldn't take too long to save it, and then once it's done, the model checker asked me if I want to open the export, and at this point I don't need to open the export. I can say no. I can say close here. And then if I look inside of my reports, I can see there's 001 waiting for me after I've exported it. My next steps are going to be to open the Power BI template and configure it to work with my reports that I have exported from Model Checker. So I've got Power BI open here. I'm going to go to File and Open, and I'm going to track down the template that I have unzipped from the file I downloaded from the website. So this is the location where I unzipped it to my project folder. Um, right now it's looking for a Power BI file. I need to just toggle that over to a Power BI template file. And here's the Revit model dashboard template. I'll select that, select Open. And once it starts opening up, it's going to ask me for some parameter data that it needs for the queries to run properly. Now, these first two, Transform01 and Transform02, I want to leave alone 
because those are working as expected and they know where to find information. But what I do need to give it is the folder path where I am collecting my Excel files. Now, unfortunately, this is not a folder uh, driven selection. It's just a text field. So what I like to do at this point is to find where I'm keeping my reports in Explorer, highlight in the address bar. I'm going to copy this value here and then I'm just going to paste it right in here into uh, the parameters. So once this is set up, once this is looking at my reports folder, I'm just going to click load and it's going to load in the template. It's going to load in that first report and it's going to start generating my information for me. During our testing, we found that some users, when they were adding the folder and loading in their Excel files, they would be prompted with an error message concerning access database and drivers. Uh, it looks like this. So if you get that error message, there is a URL pointing to a Microsoft page in the readme file that's going to lay out how to fix that and work around it. So it's found my data. It's going to start generating the reports on those pages. Some of the information is going to not give me uh, anything in there. For example, work sets. This is not a work shared model, so I have zero work sets. I have no links but it's pulling the data from that first Excel file. And if I go to the latest report tab, I can see I've got my dashboards and my uh, dials and my tachometers set up where it's starting to give me some of the important information related to those metrics that I want to track, that I want to get the health information of my model for. So once that is set up there, I just need to save my report. And so I click save and I'm going to find a location in my project folder, and then this is going to be my Revit dashboard. And then now that this file is pointing to the right location, whenever I add more Excel files to that folder and open up my dashboard, it's going to reflect that new information and show me the consolidated data and show me the latest report information. So as we demonstrated, those steps are outlined here again. And as a reminder, the first step is to create a folder or identify a folder where we're going to save our Excel reports. We want to make sure we only save our Excel files into that folder. Power BI can get a little confused if it finds other information and it tries to consume that information. Then inside of Revit, we set up our model to use the dashboard check set. We were sure to toggle which year of Revit we are using since that check set contains model element checks for multiple years and the categories inside of Revit can change from year to year. Then inside Revit, we simply run our model checker report. We export those results into the Excel file in our selected folder that we identified in step one. Then inside of Power BI, we opened the report template. We configured it and changed the folder path and did any other dashboard tweaks we wanted to do to the text or other information on the report page. And then once the report was run, uh, we saved that Power BI report, and then we were able to reference back to it as we added more and more files. Speaking of which, as we continue tracking, as we add more information to our dashboard, it is simply repeating steps four and five. Once the setup is done per project, all we need to do is rerun Model Checker report and export those Excel files. So as we continue to add Excel files to our monitored folder, the results inside of our Power BI dashboard are going to evolve as well. Obviously, with a single report, it doesn't look like much, but as we add more reports over time, our trending dashboard is going to show us interesting insight and information into our model, and Power BI is going to recognize those new Excel files with no issue, either uh, simply when I open Power BI or when I run Refresh. Related, the latest report is going to always know to look at the dates inside of my model checker Excel files, and it's going to display only the most recent run in there. So once I've set up my dashboard, once I've created it, once it's working properly, I need to share the data. I can do that by generating PDFs. Power BI has the functionality to export my reports as a PowerPoint file. I can do simple screenshots and save PNGs and maybe link those directly inside of my Revit file. Power BI also has its own online sharing functionality, which we will not get into in this video, but that is another option for Power BI users to leverage as well. 
Some final tips and notes, some takeaways to keep in the back of your head as you are using the provided check set and Power BI information. A note that comes up a lot of times is the model checker purgeable elements report. This is not a one-to-one -one match for the purge UI or for the UI purge unused inside of Revit. It is very, very close. And for simple metrics and for simple dashboard reference, we find that it is, uh, it, it's close enough, but you will notice it is not a precise one-to-one -one match there. The second item there is that the dashboard itself only looks at the date, not the time inside of my Excel files. So same day reports are going to confuse Power BI. As this was intended as an overall health check, as a trending check inside my models, we didn't find it necessary to be able to get down to the granular level of checking the time a report was run, simply the date. You can certainly update it and modify it so your report does pay attention to the time if you do happen to be running your reports on an hourly or multiple times a day basis. Those threshold settings for the colored tiles and for my tachometers on my individual pages can be adjusted by selecting the report themselves and going to the properties and changing the, t changing the amounts in there. We put some general amounts that we find as good best practices, but obviously those may be adjusted based on uh, the performance of your workstations, the size of your projects, your internal requirements, or even your external requirements on your models as well. So as a quick note on how to make modifications to your thresholds, if you're on your latest report tab, you can select uh, one of the tachometers. And then if you come over to the visualizations tab, and if you go to the format button, that's this uh, little roller, paint roller icon here. This is where the settings are in here that are going to adjust what your thresholds are and what the colors are for each. So if we expand the gauge access first, this is identifying my end value. So in this case, for my warnings per megabyte, I gave it the value of eight in there. Now, range one, range two, range three, those are my three ranges or three zones as you see in this tachometer itself. The first range starts at zero, so there's nothing to put in here other than the color and the percent thickness of it. Range two actually has a color thickness and what is the start value of range two. And then range three has its own start value of five. So if I just need to change this to six, I can come in here, change my start value to six. And then once I click off, you'll notice that it's automatically updated this tachometer with my new settings. Now, in terms of the other cards down here, if I select one of the cards, and again, if I go to this paint roller under the format, there are the modifications and settings down here I need to make to adjust when those change colors as well. So the first thing you'll notice, the fill color by default is this red. So the default color for these tabs is the highlighted kind of in the warning zone of red. And what I can do then, I can build conditions that will say if the value is less than 15, uh, make it green, and if it's less than 50, make it yellow. So this is where I make those changes here. So if I wanted to adjust my little yellow range to be uh, 100 and below, I will change that to 100. Then once I click off, you'll see that changes the setting here. Each one of these cards has its own range in here. And over, uh, if you expand down the formatting tab, this is where you're gonna make modifications to those thresholds, to those settings, and to the color ranges if you want as well. And then we certainly strongly recommend you identify a specific schedule to run your reports on. Perhaps it's weekly, perhaps it's monthly, perhaps it's every time you have a project review meeting, but some schedule to make that happen. So with that, we hope this was beneficial for you. Feel free to download the files and start using them, and hopefully you'll get some insight and get some better information around your own Revit model health.